Welcome back. We are in this session going to talk more about affective language. When you look at restorative practices, affective language is something that is um, low level, something that we do with all students. Um, it's the way that we speak. It's the way that we make statements and the way we ask questions that's restorative. In our last session, we really talked about what affective language was. It's both statements and questions. And we spent most of our time talking about how statements express your own feelings, which is very foreign to teachers often that feel like they need to be very professional and objective and, and a robot. And um, what we're learning from the restorative practices field is that it's okay to tell a child that that hurt your feelings because you worked really hard on that lesson or you came back from from being out for a while and there was a substitute and your class was terrible for the sub and you came back and it was so disappointing and it made you sad and you had a need a need for them to to stay bonded as a group and and to have pride in their own work and things like that so it's okay to express your emotion. And so we talked about a way to do that. And then um, we talked that questions, the restorative questions, the affective questions, is also a way that we're not blaming and shaming people, but we're solving problems. So that is, is what we've been working on. The statements, informal, um, express how you were impacted by someone else's behavior. Very humanizing, teachers are allowed to be people too and no shame or blame. And we also talked about what affective statements were not. It's not about a guilt trip. It's not about you being emotional with a student or losing your cool or even expressing intense anger or something that might trigger a child that's been traumatized or upset, you know, sensitive kids or any kids. But it is about having a heart to heart that's very calm and um, non-shaming or scary. So that's what we worked on. What we did is we used the nonviolent communication frame from the Center on Nonviolence, um, cnvc.org. And it's a fantastic um, center. It's been really around since the 1960s and really seeking world peace, essentially. And they, they say that if we make just a factual observation about something without judgment, pair it with a feeling, how it made you feel, and you also express a need or a value with it and then make a request, if you kind of follow that pattern, which feels awkward at first, that you're gonna have a lot better chance of solving something. So that's what we tried. So we came up with this sentence frame. Um, I notice blank. I feel blank because I have a need for, would you consider blank? I noticed there are something factual, three pairs of socks on the floor. I feel disappointed. I feel frustrated because I have a need for a clean, orderly home. Would you consider picking them up, please? Right? And it sounds funny for like the low end, easy stuff, but that's essentially what it is. And so we're actually going to practice together a few of these. We're going to talk about what's a situation that you think you could have used an affective statement. And maybe think about something that happens enough that it would be worth your while to plan one out. Um, something that, like a conflict that happens maybe between you and a student or something you see that maybe you with your class or a group, it can be with an individual, something that happens and that you could use an affective statement for that. And I know some of you have been working on them this week. So let's take some share outs um, and in no particular order, but I would like everyone to think about it. Um, everybody share out one situation where they think they could use it. I think when the students hurt each other in class. Ooh, okay. Uh, Good. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Do you have another one, Peggy? Uh, uh, well, I mean, I have, I get triggered a lot by how an adult talks to me at school. So I don't know if I, you want me to bring yeah. that up, like a staff or. You, I, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. What you're going to do is you are going to turn off your mic and your camera and take three minutes. You probably won't need much more, three to five. 
And I want you to plan your own statement for that problem that you just said. And then we're going to come back and share them out. And then you just turn your camera back on when you're ready. So the, the, here's the frame that you're going to use. What I'm going to do is in our chat, let me um, copy and paste again the, um, the feelings and needs list because I think that's useful. And it, this also has a copy of the frame, the sentence frame that you can use. Does everybody understand the instructions? OK. So go ahead, everybody. We're going to turn off your mic, turn off your camera. And then three, as soon as you're ready, you have your statement written out, you're going to turn your camera back on. OK? Ready? Go. I have one student who, um, who would persistently, um, if you asked him to do something and he didn't want to, would um, would yell back at me that I was always always doing something, you know, that in in the negative. You're always telling me I'm doing this, or you're always um, okay. telling me not to do things, or you're always okay. telling me to put my things away, like that type of thing. Um, right. And to be okay. honest, I never really knew exactly how to deal with it. Here, what we're going to do is I want you to read out your affective statement and the rest of us are listening. Is it start with an observation that's purely factual? Um, tone of voice counts. So we're not sighing and rolling our eyes. Um, you're going to name an emotion without judgment. And we're going to talk about needs or your values and then you'll make a request. OK, so let's have um, let's have Eileen go first. OK. Um, I'll just make I'll just make up a name. Um, Brian, I noticed that you hit Todd and that he's crying. I feel frightened because I have a need for my students to feel safe. Would you consider using your words or an iMessage next time you have an issue with Todd? Great. I don't think I have any adjustments for that. Do you, any any thoughts from Peggy or Shannon? Anybody have any thoughts about that? Was the observation purely factual? Yeah, yeah. right? She, she didn't say again or still or anything like that. She said she felt frightened because she wanted safety. Um, that sounds good. So let's take Shannon. Are you ready, Shannon, to give us yours? Yes. OK, I noticed you yell at me when you have your book out at the wrong time. That feels disrespectful to me. I need my classroom to feel safe. Will you please take out your book at the appropriate time? Okay. So the observation was that when you've asked him to put his book away, he raises his voice and he yells at you? Yes. Okay. So, so, so I see that or I notice that. And you some of the time you're doing this right in the moment, yeah. you know, and sometimes you're going to do it like before it happens because it's a regular thing and this is a regular thing. I noticed that this would be better um, that sometimes when I ask you to put your book away, you look at me and you say, you're always yelling at me or whatever he says, like quote it back to them. That's like the best thing to do because then you're, and, and you're not going to do it in any kind of like acting way like I just did. You know, so I noticed that, you know, I noticed that when I ask you to put your book away, you argue or even say, you say, I wouldn't even say argue. You say, um, you're always telling I me to go away. away. That makes me feel, and what was your feeling? Oh yeah, disrespect is actually a need. Respect is a need you have, it's not an emotion. Okay. So how, how does it actually feel, Shannon, for okay. you when he says that? And I, I feel like it makes me feel unsafe and it makes the rest of my class feels, feel unsafe. Okay, what else? That, that's it. Hurt your feelings? Does it hurt your feelings when he Do yells you at you? Hurt. Um, or make you fr it makes or frustrated or yeah. mad? It makes me frustrated. Yeah. Frustrated, it okay. Doesn't, and doesn't, you can have yeah. more than one. And, okay. Yeah, it makes frustrated and a little nervous or uncomfortable. 
Okay. Yeah, nervous. To do so like I try not to scale. Like yeah, a real intense. intense is unless really intense. Um, it makes me feel uncomfortable because I have a need to have a really calm atmosphere in this class so people, right? And maybe that's what you would say. And then your yeah. request would be, okay. what's your request? My request is, uh, will you please take out your book at the appropriate times? Okay, you could do that. And if this is a heart to heart, you might not want to use the word appropriate because your kids are a little younger. It's a little bit of a judgy word, right? Okay. So would you be willing to take out your book when I ask you? Or better yet, take it out before I ask you. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> you know, um, when your partner takes it out. Um, and then the other thing I, I've seen that nicely with kids is I feel uncomfortable with this because I value a safe, you know, classroom that people don't oh. yell. Um, that's what I need. But what do you need? And that's a really, oh I, that's yeah, kind wow. of a twist at the end. And I, yeah. I think it's powerful because he might say, I want you to stop bossing me around. <laughs> Well, tell me more about that. <laughs> you know, so that's that's not a purist way, but that that can work. Oh, okay. beautiful job, everybody.